Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam. Ala Nabiya na Muhammad wa ala Ali wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da. Ahabbat al-Fila. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And to unite us all upon Islam wa Iman wa Sunnah. And may Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala protect us from all the deviant ways of thought and ideologies and systems and those things which cause us to be away from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and far from the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. All of us are seeking the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of mankind, the love of people. That is a innate characteristic and trait that we have. We, we seek acceptance from people. And perhaps to a greater or lesser extent, there is no harm in that. Seeking that people accept you in good as long as you don't allow that to totally define you. To define who you are in your existence. And in a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An Abi Abbas Sahl ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal. جاء رجل إلى نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله دلني على عمل إذا عملته أحبني الله وأحبني الناس فقال أزهد في الدنيا يحبك الله وأزهد فيما عند الناس يحبك الناس And this is a hadith, Hassanahu, or declared Hassan and narrated in Ibn Majah. In this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Abi Abbas Sahal ibn Sa'ad as Sa'idi, he said, A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, O Messenger of Allah, direct me to a deed which when I have done it, Allah will love me and people will love me. So he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, be indifferent towards pleasures of the world and Allah will love you. And be indifferent toward what people have and people will love you. Ru'ahu ibn Majah. In this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see, ya habitifillah, the importance of zuhd, asceticism. And that the mu'min should strive to not allow this worldly life to enter his or her heart. And it's well known that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, he discouraged excessive concern for this worldly life and the worldly pleasures. In one hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, he said, a dunya sijin of mu'min with jannat al kafir. This life is the prison of the believer and the paradise of the disbeliever. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ittaqu dunya. 
The Prophet ﷺ said, fear the dunya. So don't let the dunya consume you and overcome your heart. And as we mentioned, perhaps it's from our fitrah. And I believe it is. I believe it's our inherent nature that we want to find the pleasure of people. No one wants to be hated by people, or most people don't. Some people take pleasure in that, and they get their fame from exhibiting that hatred. Certain musicians of certain genres of music, that's what they like. And other people, perhaps, have that trait. But most people, our natural inclination is that we actually want people to like us. And we want people to love us. And we want, perhaps, even the fame, or we want the pleasure of people and we want people to know us and ha and we have a certain degree of popularity. I think that's probably fair to say that that's our natural inclination. So the mu'min is always trying to harness that so that way it doesn't cause them to do sin or compromise the traits of iman and belief. And the mu'mineen and the salihin, the righteous, they're always trying to direct and can direct their lives and concern themselves with the love and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith of the man who asked the Prophet وسلم, and he asked a very beautiful question because it's a question all of us, we want to know. We all have that, like I said, we all have that desire. We all have that, that nature. We want, we want the pleasure of people and we want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes first. And there is no harm being accepted by the people and loved by people. There's no harm in that in general. And even having some of that as a desire. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ didn't make enkar of that man. Because some people might be thinking, ah, look, seeking the pleasure of the people, seeking this, seeking that. No. <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ did not make enkar of this man who asked him, وسلم, about the pleasure of the people. His, his question was very... very useful for you and I. He said, Dullani ala amalan idha amaltuhu ahabbani Allah wa ahabbani al-nas. He said, show me something or tell me something. Inform me about something which will cause the people to love me and cause Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love me. So he was seeking both of those. And as we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِينَا ذَابِ النَّارِ O Allah, or O our Lord, give us good in this life and good in the hereafter and protect us from the fire. What a comprehensive dua because that's for the good. You're asking for the has hasana in this life as well as the next. Khalas, after that you're, you're finished. You, you just have these two... <coughs> Two lives, this life, and then entering Barzakh, which is the hereafter, it's the beginning stage of the hereafter. And you're asking for good in both of them. So this is a, we, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with good in this life as well as the hereafter. And protects us from the fire. So he said, Dunlani ala shay, you know, Tell me about something that the people, that Allah would love me and the people would love me. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he answered that. And again, I said, he didn't make enkar of that. So he didn't deny that that's uh, something that is good or that's something that's acceptable to seek the pleasure of people. Just as long as that's not compromising your deen, compromising your integrity, on and on and on, etc. Of course. So the Prophet ﷺ has said, you know, have zuhud, be indifferent <clears throat> towards the pleasures of this life, and Allah will love you. Stop there. Be indifferent 
toward the pleasures of this life. That also reminds me of that other hadith we mentioned, a dunya sijil al mu'min jannat al kafir. This life is the prison of the believer and the paradise for the disbeliever because one of the reasons, perhaps this is the case, is because the believer is restricted in what he or she can enjoy and indulge in in this life. So there's some restraint and there's patience and there's the various levels of patience. Patience on sabr ala ta'atillah, sabr ala ma'asiyatillah, wa sabr ala iqdarillah. That there's the three levels of patience that the believer must endure. There's patience with regards to obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, it takes, it takes patience and it takes striving to pray Fajr uh, every day, uh, even the, the early times, in the early times of the summer, making wudu if you, or making ghusl if you have to, cold water, cold environment. <clears throat> You know, that, that takes uh, sabr, it takes patience to endure. It takes restraint and it takes striving. It takes effort and it also takes restraint from your nafs that you want to sleep and, and, and so forth. And then the sabr, ala masiyatillah, ala masiyatillah. Uh, patience with regards to the, the sins, disobedience to, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, you may want... Uh, you know, as your inclination, we have an inclination to do all kind of things that we restrain ourselves because they're disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, zina. For example, some people want to get high just a little bit, cool out, chill out, smoke a little weed. No, you restrain yourself lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you get away, <coughs> move yourself away from the ma'asiyatillah. So that's the second type of patience we mentioned, which uh, Ibn al-Qayyum, he expounds upon this extensively in some of his texts. And then the third type of habatif Allah is a patience fi iqdarillah or ala iqdarillah. This requires being patient with regards to the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning things don't always go our way. As the Prophet sallallahu said, tu'min will be qadri khayri wa shar, to believe in the divine uh, decree, the good and the evil of it. So meaning that there are things that could be displeasing to us, for sure. You know, we have death in our family. We have sickness for ourselves, sickness for our families, sickness for our friends, death of, you know, and, and things that just don't go our way. We have revolutions that take place. We have bloodshed. We have the torment of our people. We have oppression. We have all kind of things that we are not pleased with. We're not happy about those things. But when you realize as a believer that this is a part of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that allows for the mu'min to have taslim fi qalb, fi qalb, to be patient within his or her heart and accepting of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and functioning without destroying themselves and without going to disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are the levels of, <coughs> of patience. So the believer has to restrain his or herself with regards to the dunya, with regards to the things in this life. It's not all as we want it to be. So there's restraint. Whereas the disbeliever, although they have to deal with the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can't escape it, but yet they don't have the uh, often, more often than not, they don't have the same boundaries unless they are of, of a religion or some sort of ideology that restrains them from certain actions and deeds. But the believer has a different <clears throat> different kind of restraint because it's in accordance with the book and the sunnah. It's in accordance with the shara, the shariatillah. And so, those are the levels of patience. So the believer, if he or she finds content in this life, can contentment in their in their lives, in their situations, in what they face, in what's going on around them, then <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love them. SubhanAllah. So trying to find that contentment 
trying to find uh, being content and not taking the dunya in your heart is marghub, is something which is uh, desired by the mu'min, it's something that we should be striving to do. And <clears throat> then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about the nas, the people, how to get the pleasure of people. And that be that he وسلم, said, you know, having zuhud with regards to what the people have. <coughs> Basically, if you're not asking from what other people and not desiring what other people, people will naturally love you. And you find this, we find this from experience. Think about it. The person who's always requesting from the people and always asking of the people, how do people feel about him or her? A lot of times it's very negative. We've known some brothers and sisters who are chronically homeless, okay? And sometimes due to no fault of theirs, but sometimes perhaps they need to make other efforts themselves. But we're not talking to putting down people because they're homeless. We're talking about people who don't strive to better their situation and they beg from the people. They are always asking and always in need of the people. So if that's the case, or when when that's the case, we find that people people reject people like this more than likely. They don't want to be around them. They are, you know, they're tired of hearing their negative stories. They're tired of, of being asked by them. But on the op the opposite is the one who doesn't want from the people. They're, they, they're not envious and they don't exhibit traits which show that they want something from the people. People have a natural, have a tendency to love people like this. That this person is kind of self-sufficient and they are not begging and desiring and requiring from us. So these are just some things to reflect on in the context of that hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I think the overall benefit that we gain from this hadith is showing us the importance of zuhd dunya of not allowing the worldly life to to overcome our hearts and to deceive us and to destroy our deeds being so concerned about what others have or be distracted to where we're going to never be never satisfied with what we have and that we're going to be have a lack of contentment in general in life and a lack of fulfillment because you'll find yourself that you're miserable in this life and then you perhaps that'll lead to your misery in the hereafter. And surely the person who's miserable in this life as well as the hereafter is surely one of the chasidim. So you don't want to be like that. You want to strive to fortify your heart, not be of those who desire this worldly life so much. But the way to offset that is by desiring the hereafter more. Striving to learn more about your religion. To contemplate and reflect on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do those simple pleasures in this life and strive to find contentment in that and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up other things for you we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct is from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was surely from myself in the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam